Hi, it's Daniel Ramey with Circo Innovations. Today we're going to be showing you how to build the Gothic arch design from start to finish. This design is going to have a new setup than our last video. Let's get into it. Now we're going over the parts list for the pipe and fittings. As we go over that, do remember that the door is already assembled and all those pieces are factored into the count. We're going to need four of the 81Fs, those are the pipe stakes. We're going to need 60 of the snap clamps in one inch. Next, we're going to have 12 of the slip crosses. We need 14 of the side saddle tees. We're going to need four of the side saddle tee hanging. We need 12 of the slip tees. We're going to need 18 of the 90 degree L's. We're going to need six of the 45 degree L's. Next, we're going to need two of the caps. We're going to need three of the four ways. You're going to need four of the three ways. We're going to be needing four of the snap hinge. You're going to need two snap crosses. One section cut to eight feet long. We need two sections cut to 76 and a half inches long. We need two sections cut to 74 inches long. You're going to need three sections cut to 31 inches long. You're going to need 20 sections cut to two feet long. You're going to need five sections cut to 22 inches long. You're going to need four sections cut to 18 inches long. You're going to need six sections cut to eight inches long. You're going to need 10 sections cut to three inches long. You're going to need 11 sections cut to 10 feet long. You also need some rope and some self-tapping screws. All right, now we're going to go over the door assembly. First, we have here the window adjustment. We have two side saddle tees two six inch sections of PVC pipe, one 22 inch section, and two L's. The reasoning for this design is to allow your window to kind of act as a vent. You can hook it back on, you pop these off, take this completely out of the mechanism, you're gonna be left with a fully opening window. More flow of air, this could be the best option for you, but we kind of added this setup so you can have some more options for a less open, or fully open the window. We have the same mechanism, same setup for this door handle here. What we have on the window is four sections of PVC pipe cut to 18 inches long. We have four L's making that box. We're using snap clamps to hold the plastic on. And then we have a snap cross for the top. Let's go over the frame of the door. First, you're gonna need a section that's cut to 22 inches long another 22 inches long section, and one more 22 inch section. You're gonna need two 74 inch sections. You're gonna need two side saddle tees and four L's for the frame. Now we have our snap hinges here. Place it roughly a foot from the top. Also place one roughly a foot from the bottom right there. Now you're gonna have two for the windows and you're set. This is the piece of plastic that you're gonna be using for the back side of your Gothic arch design. This section here is about four feet long, and then if you go a long ways, it's about 89 inches long. On this back side on the bottom, it's 105 inches. For the plastic for the Gothic arch, there's a couple different ways you could do it. You can use the dimensions that we show you here in a second, or you can throw the plastic over your design and make your own custom cuts. Long ways here is 21 feet, on each side, it's 12 feet long. You're obviously gonna need a bigger piece of plastic. For these arches here, you're gonna have to make a custom cut after you make your rough cut. In this section here, you're using your 10 foot sections along with your two foot sections. On that top portion, you're using two of the three ways and three of the four ways to build that A-frame design. After that, you're gonna use the slip tees and the slip crosses with more of those two foot sections. We found this the best way to set you up for success on building the Gothic Arch. Just like we did on this here, we made it level. We screwed from the bottom so it didn't snag on the plastic. We're gonna level these out down here so they're flush and we're gonna put screws on all the bottoms. All right, now we're taking the slip tee off and replacing it with a three-way. The reason we're doing this, this is the option switch. Basically, if you wanna have a door on the backside here, you need a three-way. If you just want it open, you need the slip tee. So we're placing two three ways, one on each side, and then we'll be set when we pull it together to put a door in the system. 
We made rebar stakes, bending rebar and cutting it around two feet long to hold down the gothic arch. Now we're taking our rebar stakes and we'll be placing five on each side. After you've placed your stakes on one side, push the gothic arch roughly eight feet apart from each other, then place the rest of the stakes along the other side. Another option you could do besides the rebar is taking a stake and coming straight through the pipe itself. What this would do is shore it up, make it more flush on the end like that. Just another option, we just decided to go with the rebar. For the support bars, you need one of the 31 inch sections of PVC pipe. You'll need two of the 45 degree L's. You will need two sections of PVC pipe cut to three inches long, and you will need two of the side saddle tees. You will place these support bars in the middle and on the back and front. The middle one will not have any slip tees, but the back and front ones will need two slip tees as we're going to use them later on. Let's talk about this bottom section here. We have an eight foot section of PVC pipe coming along here. We have two side saddle tees and two 90 degree elbows. The spacing in between here, so it fits the door nicely, will be 31 inches from each end. And then on the spacing, butt it up against the three-way over there, you want it around 33 inches, and the same from this side. That's gonna put your angle directly where you need it for the door. All right, now you're gonna take your two 76 and a half inch section ones. All right, now we're gonna place our door. Come over here. We want it just enough so it's not scraping. We also want these hinges to be out like that and tight so you have the most maximum hinge effect. It also allows for less air to come through into your greenhouse. Both of these slip tees at the top, push them all the way to the elbow. Put a self-tapping screw right through the middle to hold them fully open. You might notice how this section sticks out more than these other ones here. The reasoning for that is you have a three-way still, pushing it, kind of making it taut and straight up. We're using this new design with the slip crosses. Uh, if you see on the picture on the screen now, you have these poles going in between uh, using four ways and three ways. This doesn't have any torque making it do that, so this design is gonna be a little different. But the benefit for this design is we can pull tractors, uh, equipment, wheelbarrows straight through here without having the poles on the ground. Now we're gonna build a cradle system for that roll-up door. First, you're gonna take your slip tees that we placed on the ends here, and you're gonna take one of the eight inch sections and stick it into the slip tee. Make sure it's fully seated. Take a 90 degree L, stick it on. Next, you're gonna take another eight inch section, have it coming off, another 90 degree L, like that. And you're going to take one of your short sections and a cap and finish it off like that. You can screw this or glue this together after you have it fully aligned. You want this to be able to freely swing, don't screw that in. All right, so we finished everything except for putting the covering on the top and placing our roll-up door right here. Now we're gonna be doing a tri-fold on both sides. Turning it like that, placing snap clamps, keeping it nice and taut all the way around.
Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. To purchase any of these items, go to www.circoinnovations.com.